my worst bathroom experience. By you slash Captain Fantastic. I hunched over the toilet bowl, retching, my abdominal muscles forgotten under layers of fat, twisted and forced me to expel what little contents my stomach held, phlegm and coffee mostly. Once I felt the storm inside me settle, I sat on the toilet seat, gasping for breath. I stared blankly at the off-white wall two feet in front of me. The shapes in the knockdown texture looked like the globs of mucus I hacked up during another recent coughing fit. I tore off some toilet paper and blew my nose, and despite the loud kazoo noise, not much came out. I tossed the paper in the bin and cradled my head in my hands. This felt good. My head felt warm and supported, like an egg in a bird's nest. Mouth agape, I took raspy breaths and let out gunky wheezing. It wasn't the most comfortable position, but the sickness screwed up my sleep enough that I felt like I could rest here forever. My mind receded into itself as I drifted closer to unconsciousness. And then my dog started barking, which snapped me back to reality. They were in the backyard currently, but they liked to let the house know whenever a car door closed or a squirrel climbed over on a fence. Or when the sun was out. Just, you know, whenever. I love my pups with all my heart, but... God, their barking claws away at my sanity. Over the din of the dogs, I heard the front door to my house open. It isn't a big house to begin with, but the front door is maybe 20 feet away from the bathroom in which I was currently deflated. So I heard it well. My roommates were supposed to have left earlier for an anniversary trip, but I had probably forgotten something and came back to grab it. Between the two of them, neither had any sense to check for important items before leaving the house. I heard their footsteps as they walked over our hardwood floors. Only one set of footsteps, and I thought to myself. Probably Hannah just running in to grab a missing ID or debit card or whatever. I opened my eyes and looked over the bathroom door as it, a screen was going to pop out and let me confirm my thoughts. Instead, the door remained wide and solid and answered none of my questions. I swiveled my head back into the comfy, cradled position and resumed wallowing in my misery. The dogs eventually ceased their barking and the footsteps were more audible than before. They weren't traveling toward the side of the house where Hannah and Megan's room, the master bedroom, was. They were coming down the hall toward the bathroom. Oh God, I hope they don't need anything in here, I thought to myself. There might be sunscreen under the sink, but it's that SPF 50 thick library paste stuff, and Hannah hates that. The steps made their way down the hallway and past the bathroom. I exhaled with relief, but the steps continued on to what sounded like my room. I looked back up at the door confusion bringing my eyes to a squint. They were in my room. They were right on the other side of the wall at which I was staring. Did Hannah need me for something? An itch in my throat caused me to fall into a minor coughing fit. Each breath felt like it was passing through a swamp. I focused the best I could to control my breathing and in a few seconds I returned back to normal. Well, my current normal anyway. Once I was quiet again, I turned my ears back towards the footsteps. However, they were gone. I sat there for seconds without hearing anything. I kept my eyes on the door, hoping it would give me a clue as to where the person went. And the footsteps started again. They moved faster than before. Lighter, too, as if they were trying not to make any noise. The quiet of the house and the creaky wooden floor made silence virtually impossible, though. 
As the sound got closer, I saw the shadows of feet through the crack under the door. They stopped in front of the bathroom. A pit formed in my stomach as I stared at the shadows. They weren't moving. Not an inch. If this was Hannah, she was being a real creep. Maybe she's waiting for me to open the door to scare me? I was the most jittery of the housemates, so Hannah and Megan had some fun scaring me on occasion. Like the time they set up a scarecrow Halloween decoration in the front room for me to stumble upon it early one morning as I was getting ready for work. Well, if they wanted to scare me, they'll have to burn more vacation time, I thought to myself. I turned the shower on and the bathroom quickly filled with steam. I disrobed and took one last look at the shadows under the door before hopping into the shower. They weren't budging. Okay, Hannah, let's see how much patience you have. And the shower made me feel a bit better. Breathing was an easy due to the steam and my ill respiratory system. But the water enveloped my body like a warm blanket. It took every ounce of willpower I had to resist curling up in the tub and taking a nap as the water sprayed me from above. By the time I forced myself to turn off the water and open the shower curtain, I had nearly forgotten about Hannah's attempted prank. My eyes went to the crack under the door, and the foot shadows were still there. I wasn't positive, but I felt like I was in the shower for at least 15 minutes. I couldn't believe Hannah would waste this much time when she could be on her way to sipping champagne in her hotel room. <coughs> Hello? I asked toward the door. No response. H Hannah? Still nothing. Look, I know somebody's out there. I could see your shadow underneath the door. I was done with this game. I was achy and tired and just wanted to lay down. The shadows adjusted slightly. The doorknob twitched gently as the person on the other side tried to open it. Fortunately, my paranoia has me always locking the bathroom before showering. The knob may have rattled softly, but it didn't turn. The person on the other side began shaking the doorknob violently. The screws holding the fixture in seemed to barely be holding on. And the person started beating on the door. And the force was so violent that the door began bending in the middle, threatening to give way with an ounce of more effort. My eyes darted around the small bathroom, hoping to spot a weapon. The best I found was my toothbrush. I grabbed it in case, but I didn't have any doubts about what would happen to me if the intruder made it past the door. The dogs in the backyard started barking and the pounding stopped. For the first time since they appeared, the foot shadows went away from the door. A few moments later, I heard the front door swing open. Hi, Joel. Hannah's perky voice sang through the house. My dumbass forgot my ID. Have you seen it by chance? I tried to scream to her to tell her to run, that there was somebody in here with the house with us anything. But as soon as my mouth opened, I launched into another coughing fit. My panic made it all the worse when my body began to retch again. I let my phlegm and saliva pour onto the bathroom floor as I hacked my way closer to the door. I heard Hannah's footsteps come down the hall toward the bathroom. Joel, you sound like shit. Do you need something? Some water? I opened my mouth to warn her, but Again, I exploded into a coughing fit. My abs were so weak, I crumpled to my knees and banged on the door in an effort to send her any kind of message. Joel, are you okay? She was cut off. I could hear her voice being muffled and, and that there was a struggle. Hannah wriggled free enough to let out a scream, but it was quickly silenced and followed by loud thumps. I felt in my stomach the reverberation of each strike. I heard Hannah's wet crying as she begged for help, and then with a hard and loud wet stomp. Everything was quiet except for the dogs barking. 
I gasped for breath. My eyes felt swollen, like they might pop out of my face. Hunched over, I, I cried and wheezed and did all I could to keep breathing. The intruder's foot shadows approached the door again. They didn't try forcing the door down again, instead it sounded like they were scratching the door. And after a moment that stretched an eternity, the foot's shadows left. The front door opened and closed and the dogs calmed down. And I stayed there on the bathroom floor holding myself and staring into the middle distance until Hannah's blood started flowing through the crack underneath the door. The shock forced me to my feet. Convincing myself that the danger was gone, I opened the bathroom door. Hannah's body was immediately visible in the bedroom across the hallway. She laid askew on the floor, hardly resembling the person I remembered. I choked back tears and ran across the blood to my room. I slammed my door closed and locked it, and then grabbed my cell phone and called 911. When the operator picked up to ask me the nature of my emergency, I, I tried to explain, but I, I fell into another coughing fit. Frustrated, I threw the phone away from me and cried impotent tears. My phone didn't disconnect, thankfully, and the police were at my house astonishingly fast. They asked me to stay in my room temporarily, but came in to get my story and ensure that I was okay. After I told them everything that happened, the officer I had been talking to asked if I saw the bathroom door. My confused expression answered his question, and he asked me to follow him. Halfway down my hallway, I, I could see what the cop was talking about. On the bathroom door, scrawled in Hannah's blood, was a message. See you soon.